Yeah, I, um, I want to talk to you about plants. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm somebody who uh, didn't have any confidence about growing things when I was small. Um, but I learned from my mom about gardens. Uh, and then I kind of would say I had a uh, fallow period where I didn't really do anything. Mm -hmm. And then in my middle age, uh, I realized uh, I want to um, have the experience of growing things that are naturally there and see um, what I can learn. And this may sound crazy, so maybe I am from another planet, but what can I learn from plants? And, of course, I ended up uh, realizing I learned lots. And um, so in my own life, uh, I have a beautiful big garden in our backyard, which I uh, built and designed and uh, worked hard at and uh, very happily doing that. And now it's a mature garden and it looks after itself quite a bit. Um, and uh, that leads me to something that I know I've told you, but the people listening won't know that. Um, that I, in fact, at this point in my life, uh, um, assess people to the degree to which they resemble plants. Mm. And that mm. sounds a uh, mm -hmm. tad bizarre, but here's what I mean. Um, I think we can learn lots from that cycle of growth that we can see with plants. And um, uh, part of it is the um, idea, and again, pun totally intended. Plants are grounded. Uh, there, there are a few varieties which, in fact, don't need the ground. You can do things hydroponically. And, um, or by air. Mm -hmm. And orchids, for instance, uh, will live yeah. in trees. Mm -hmm. um, and um, all of those things are uh, doable. But on the whole, they're grounded. And there's a set of roots. And there's a source of nourishment and stability. And there's a system that allows the nourishment that comes from under the ground to go up into the plant and it pushes itself up and it knows when to bud. Mm -hmm. And of course we've had such a weird winter. Uh, we have a magnolia tree in the backyard and it's budded four times. This year? Yeah, including in November. And all I thought was, oh, well, um, uh, that's not a good time to be doing that. But uh, then, when it became cooler, the budding just stopped. Oh, I see. So, in other words, um, I realized there's some uh, inaccuracy here to say that the plant knows what to do. But, I'm going to use that word anyway, it does know what to do. And it adapts as it needs to. Um, it goes through a cycle, uh, which uh, is uh, forming the stalk, uh, the leaves, uh, the blooming. Where for most of us, when it's a flowering plant, that's the kind of glorious part of it. But you also have to be aware that the cycle isn't finished because the plant has to go past the blooming stage and, in a sense, go back into itself and go down in the cold weather into the root. And I like that idea as a um, kind of a template for how we might try to operate in the human world. Um, and part of it is, uh, let the experience be what it is. You don't have to control it always. You don't have to... Um, I'm trying to figure out what I'm 
actually trying to save you. Um, the experience itself will look after whatever is going on. And so, I think people who give themselves uh, space, um, allow things to happen, and I don't mean for a minute, don't have any boundaries, I don't mean that at all, or just, you know, drift along with uh, the stream thing, not at all, um, but give, give yourself some room to grow and be the best peony that you can be, be the best rose you can be. Not everybody's the same. And so, uh, for instance, when my oldest son got married, that's actually what at the wedding reception, I, uh, we, all the parents were asked to say something. And um, my son, for instance, and his wife knew exactly what I was saying, but I'm not sure that other people at the reception did. But that's what I actually said to them. Be the best plant you can be. And, because you're not a plant, you're a human, also be the best gardener. Yeah, well, it's here. In other words, you're in charge. You to take care of yourself, yep. to nurture yourself. Yep. Um, but nurture, I, like, nurture yourself, but not artificially, like, nurture yourself, but not in such a frenzy, controlled manner. Yes. But, but in harmony with nature and the phases of life. Yep. Yep. Harmony. So those are, I mean, What I just said over this last little bit, uh, it kind of is veering in several directions. <laughs> it, um, you know, if I got it all under control and could get it into one paragraph, that would, I guess, be good. But you probably can pick up what I'm uh, trying to say, which is, yeah, uh, let yourself be available for experiences that will help you to grow. Mm -hmm. Which leads me to, mm -hmm. and yes. it, it, mm -hmm. sometimes we mm -hmm. uh, stop this and then start again. But that word "available" mm -hmm. is something that in my life is uh, really important, uh, and some of it comes from uh, one of my sisters who uh, uses a phrase um, uh, which I've adopted, and my children now mm -hmm. use it too. And the phrase is, "I'm sorry, I'm not available." And uh, you don't have to say it belligerently, uh, and she doesn't. Uh, I sometimes do, but uh, she doesn't. And, uh, and what she really means is, do you know what? Um, I'm, cons I'm interested in looking after myself, and what you're representing to me is something that won't help me to be the best plant I can be. So I'm telling you, I'm not a baby. Mm -hmm. And actually it works wonderfully because uh, she says it very, um, uh, well I would say forthrightly, but not uh, aggressively. And they get the message. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I think there's a lot of wisdom in her approach to that, and I know I've adopted it uh, myself, uh, which is, um, you don't, you're not obliged to be available for everybody's mm -hmm. like desire gossip, to be part of, yeah. Mm -hmm. Gossip, uh, uh, oh, yes. just mean-spirited, yes, yes. out of parties, <laughs> yeah, no, no, <laughs> get-togethers, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, um, so it's a, it's a very uh, clear way of saying um, what you have, I don't need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, thank you. And, and guess who's going to make the decision about that? Me. Mm -hmm. See, Stephen, I'm such a good gardener. 
to yeah. my plants yeah. and family, friends, yeah. and whoever yeah. needs help. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not a very good gardener for myself. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll, I'll advise my friends, oh, that's that's bad. No, no, you don't want to go near that kind of negativity yeah. and so forth, you know. <laughs> but I'll expose myself. I'll be like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. And then I'll get run over, <laughs> right? Yeah. And then I'll be like, ah. Yeah. So we have to... Well, and you know what? That's something I've learned also from uh, my husband, Douglas. Uh, he, for many years, was in healthcare. And um, actually in a very uh, traumatic uh, situation uh, because he uh, was the chaplain at... Casey House, uh, which was the uh, hospice for people uh, with HIV AIDS. And uh, in the great days, uh, which were wretched, uh, people just dying right and left. And uh, one of the things uh, that he said he had to learn, and I have had to learn it too, is you have to provide care for the caregiver. In other words, yourself. And if you don't look after yourself, um, you will eventually find you're going along on an empty tank. And that's when all of us are at risk of getting into trouble, when we don't have any reserves and we just... Um, We've run out of gas. And I never really knew what that really meant until I experienced it. Yeah. And it's not just uh, injury physically, but it's emotional and yeah. mental. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>